pain, drama, lost, unfulfilled, feeling sad. So many of us are experiencing this. I know I am. I have a good friend in Asheville and I've been crying for days. Uh, sorry, I'm getting emotional just seeing the devastation there. But what I want to focus on is how to kind of self-realize this. Realize that these emotions are real for you, right? And they are affecting you. But I want to talk about today how to self-realize this, how to self-understand yourself, how to get back into that true self so you're not just relying on those emotions that carry you down a river, that carries you so far away from that beautiful spark within that you just stay drowning in the river. We can't do that. And, you're, and Asheville is such a great paradigm to speak on this because if they stay drowning in the river, you can't now help. You can't be there to help, right? So you have to start self-actualizing and start self-realization and so forth. And so I decided this week to post a blog about all of the podcasts that I've been on. And that's not to tout what I'm, you know, oh, I'm look at Nina, she's so cool. It's not it at all. What it's about is the self-realization, is me going from my breakdown to my breakthroughs, from my, my own tsunami, right? To finding my way out, to navigating my way through this using tools like spiritual personality typing. It's traveling for the intention of seeing the differences, embracing the diversities, whether you agree or not to embrace it and see that there's some element of that in you. We are all not that different, folks. We're not that different. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about that. I'll be posting my blog probably later on today or sometime this weekend. But I wanted to talk about this because it's so heavy on my heart. Um, and it's just something I feel is so important that we all need to realize and really, I'd like to take a minute of silence. I'm going to say the prayer. Please, divine, show me. And I want you to say the same prayer and feel on your heart what you're led to do. Maybe you're led to go and, and donate something. I don't know what it is. But we all need to pitch in. We all need to pitch in, whether it's Asheville this time or whether it's you the next time. We all need to be there for each other. This is Nina Zapala, a place to talk about spiritual, personality typing, a roadmap to your true self, a way to get to know yourself better so you can show up in the world serving and helping other people reach their better, okay? So I'm gonna take a little bit of an excerpt first out of my book. I don't know if you know I wrote a book. It's called Let Your Inner Guide Be Your Travel Guide. Unpack Your Personality, okay? And a lot of the book um, is about questioning. And this is what we're all should be. And it's, I know so many of us are questioning ourselves in this day and age. Okay, so this this is uh, my first, second uh, thing that I speak of. In, in the book is travel with intention, a how-to guide. And the second tip I talked to at some length is about questioning. Here goes. All my questioning made me realize that many of my fears trying to fit in and be somebody I wasn't, sabotaging behaviors, unworthiness, and not understanding myself were the results of external conditioning, which started in childhood. Yep, it goes back that far. When left unquestioned, fear grows, resulting in unhealthy cognitive functions and living a nonplussed life. Self-experiences are huge factors that greatly influence your life and cognitive capabilities. Many of us are duped by the collective illusion 
which doesn't have our best interest at heart. Go to school, pick a career, attend a college, get married or not, retire. What the blank is that? Who makes those rules? And are those rules appropriate to you? Ask yourself those questions. In my experience, we go through pain, drama, and loss. These emotions live unconsciously within us and are typically related to an unhealthy cognitive ability, one that is, one that is susceptible to specific behaviors that hold the pain, drama, and sabotaging behaviors. If we bury them instead of questioning them, life gets really messy. That's why I believe you have to get out from under it all to clearly see yourself bringing light to your pain to see it for what it is. I give travel a ton of credit and I've learned it's the perfect time to self-actualize through real time experiences, witnessing yourself in action without the baggage of everyday life. It's where the rubber meets the road and you figure out who you really are. Based on my own experiences, I believe that our life experiences are highly influential in our lives on par with our personality preferences. Our reaction to these situations will either bring us closer to our true selves or further separate ourselves from ourselves. That's just a little excerpt from my book and I think it's very timely because I, I don't know about you, but I've been feeling the emotions from Asheville because I have a friend there, like I said, and I know the devastation and it's horrific. It really is. and. The emotions have really caught up with me and I don't want to drown in them and um, and I don't mean that I don't want to feel because I am feeling I've been crying a lot um, but we can't function from fear and this is what happens to us here on the planet we all function out of fear every single person does it I don't care who you are we all have we all, it, it's the planet is has a fear Based mentality. That's part of the reason why we're here, right? We're not here just to be this spiritually elevated person because we're here to experience the fear and the experiences, right? The emotions. So we can unpack them. So our soul can experience this, right? And then take us to the next level of understanding. So when we understand ourselves better, we are able to to better help somebody else through their stuff. So when we wallow in fear, when we stay so stuck in our emotions, we get so afraid, we, we just get so paralyzed by it. We can't help, because you don't think clearly in fear. You think, and it's not even you thinking, and I know that's counterintuitive, but when you start getting into that divine spark within, that leads your thinking. That's why I say you are not your personality type. Your personality type is just like a radio that transmits your divine spark within, the messages, the downloads that you're getting. And then it gets all these messages and it takes it through your soul, flows down through your soul from a higher intelligence, divine intelligence, that consciousness that flows down through your soul, down lower into your personality, and it expresses itself in your reality, in your personal reality. And I've said this over and over and over again. But if you're not being fed by that higher consciousness, and you're being fed by what, the, by what you, the fear of what is. And I'm not saying you're not going to experience this because people are experiencing it right now. It's too many people are experiencing this right now, and it, you know. But that's just my two cents. But there, you have to find the way to bring yourself back, to unite yourself with that spark within, because it will show you the way even in your darkest times. I know this to be true. I know this to be true. I know this to be true. Because it showed me as I went through my seven year life tsunami. 
and I've talked about this a million times before and I don't need to go into it again, but it was an extremely dark time in my life. But I had to get out of all the, oh, why victiming and all this stuff. And I know it's, it's easy to do when you're sitting there, a total devastation of your life. I get it. Been there. Done it. But it wasn't until I moved out of that. And it takes people a while. It took me, a, it took me three years to really start contemplating what the hell I was doing. I didn't understand. I was so conditioned to believe that everything on the external world was my answer and it had nothing to do with my answers. It all came from within me. So we have the answers within you. So just know that if you're going through a really hard time, the answers are within you. You have to believe, you have to trust. And yeah, you gotta be a dog with a bone and have the persistence to know that it will show up in divine timing. If it doesn't show up immediately, it means that your higher conscious, that divine intelligence is moving things around for you that you can't see to make a better path for you. And this is what I did. If you start jumping in and trying to solve all this stuff yourself, it just gets more complicated. It gets more messy. I got myself in, in just worse situations. It didn't work didn't work until I came back to myself through that divine intelligence and let my true self, your true self, when I talk about that, all I mean by that is it's the union or the partnership of your soul working through your persona. That is when you become your most authentic being. You can't have one without the other. That's like, oh, here, I made a pie, and you show up with half a pie because you're just relying on your logical self. You have to unionize the physical and the non-physical, and you always have to remember, the non-physical leads your life. I'm not gonna go on and on. It's a rainy day here, as you can see. My chair is empty sitting on the inside. I thought that was kind of funny to do. Um, but if you are going through the drama, the pain of the loss, there's so much loss there. Um, we, the people, need to all say a prayer. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is conversing with that higher intelligence and asking it already knows obviously but what is the saying when two or more are gathered in my name ha huh, you elevate right there you're elevating the energy we need to elevate the frequencies and this might sound hogwash to you but it's the truth i know it to be true i've experienced it and you know it to be true too and i'll give you a quick example and then i'm going to sign off have you ever gone to a party and you walk in and you're like, oh, what is going on here? The energy is so dense. It's such a low frequency. You can actually feel it. It hits you. Or you walk up to some and you're like, ooh, don't want to be around them because their energy is so dense and so low. That's why I'm saying when you pray, you elevate that energy upward. And when two or more are gathered, I think Jesus says that. I know Abraham Hicks talks about that. A lot of people are talking about that. You elevate energies. And I'm talking about Jesus. I'm not talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Christ. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm not talking about Catholic religion. I'm not talking about any religion. Okay? I'm talking about Christ. The Christ energy that's within you. Big difference. Okay? Well... It's Friday, and I hope you enjoy a long weekend. And I do hope you take a minute, a minute, to say a prayer. Could be for Asheville, could be for Tennessee, could be for, I don't know, the hurricane hit so many places. Could be for Tallahassee. Florida actually kind of was least affected, which we thought they'd be the most affected. Didn't work that way. Mother Nature had a different plan. So, if you take a minute, say a prayer, 
that would be awesome. And I know if you're listening to me, you already have that in you. I don't need to tell you that. And I'm certainly not telling you what to do. Choice is always yours, okay? Uh, all for now, and I'll be back with you soon. Nina Zapala, Spiritual Personality Typing. Lots of links in the description box below. Please do follow and share if you like what I'm talking about. All for now, Nina.